Hey, and welcome to this online course creation question and answer session. I've had a lot of really awesome questions come in after people watch the Ted Carr class, uh, the master class. So I wanted to put together this Q&A session for you to address all the top questions for you. Um, and over the next five minutes, you're going to learn a lot about whether or not online courses are really for you and how to go about getting started creating them uh, if they are for you. Um, now, my two assumptions with you watching this are a you have watched the masterclass at tedcarclass.com and b you're really wanting to get started selling your advice in the form of online courses maybe you're a coach right now or maybe you want to be a coach maybe you're a teacher or you want to be a teacher or you just have a result that you really want to help people get as well and you want to um, help them get it through an online course so the end result of this quick little q a session here over the next five ten minutes together is going to be um, twofold, okay? First, you're gonna be crystal clear on what you're best suited to offer and then how to actually go about start selling it on autopilot. You may think that you're suited best suited to sell one thing, but then you realize, oh, you're actually better off selling something else. Um, and then you're also gonna discover how to actually sell on autopilot so you can just focus on getting your students results. Um, and the other thing you're gonna get out of this is you're gonna get an RMS. And an RMS is a refined marketing statement, a very, very valuable to help you be crystal clear on who you wanna help and what you wanna help them with. So for example, my RMS statement looks something like this. I help vegans create profitable online coaching courses without needing any certifications or huge social media followings using automated webinars. And so by the end of it, you're going to have your own RMS like this, or at least your first draft. Now, my results with creating online courses, my results with um, applying the advice that you're going to be getting here in today's Q&A session have been pretty good. Um, last year in 2019, I was able to make over $126,000. Um, the year before that was just shy of $100,000. And um, I've gone on to be able to help a lot of students get started selling their online courses as well using the same advice you're getting here in the Q&A. Um, but um, if you do the math on this $126,000, that's over $10,000 a month. So it's pretty good, pretty good salary uh, just from selling online courses. And um, the lifestyle is pretty sweet as well. But like I said, I've gone on to help other, other people do it as well, whether they have a new or existing business. So uh, Lexi here, for example, you know, she joined my program um, and in less than 30 days, um, so she made this post on day 29, uh, in less than 30 days, she was able to make over $1,000 just by applying what you're gonna be learning here in this Q&A session, just by selling online courses, really, really cool. And she was a complete beginner with no prior experience. Um, so here's what we're gonna be covering today in this little Q&A session. First, how to find that perfect course idea. Number two is how much time you need to put in to actually see results. Why the tech isn't the issue anymore and why something else is. And why being camera shy is actually an advantage. As well, you're also gonna find out how to find your niche, that perfect niche that'll, that'll make it so much easier for you to sell your online course. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I wanna have a quick disclaimer. Um, creating, creating and selling online courses is not for everyone. Uh, I would only suggest creating and selling online courses if you're really willing to do the following four things, uh, with the fourth thing being the most important. So first, you're willing to reveal your deepest secrets to success to make sure your students get those results a hell of a lot faster than they ever believed possible. You have to reveal everything. You can't hold anything back here. So if you're willing to share all your secrets and get your students results, online courses are for you. Uh, the second thing is that you must love the topic you're teaching so much that you're willing to answer the same 45 questions again and again and again without getting annoyed or bored with it. The third thing you must be willing to do is to be there for your students when they ask you for help, which is probably going to be almost every day. You've got to be willing to show up and really help them. Uh, the fourth thing you must be willing to do is use the biggest cheat code known to man, and that is ask for help anytime you need it to speed up the process of success for yourself. So just like your students are gonna be asking you for help, it's important for you as the coach or as the teacher to also ask someone else, someone else who's higher up on the ladder than you uh, so that you can get those great results as well. Uh, of not, and great results not only helping uh, create a great course that, that gets your students results, but one that sells itself on autopilot so that you can actually focus on doing the teaching and let your course do the selling itself. Um, so if you consider yourself a teacher, online courses are for you. Um, or if you're not, you don't consider yourself a teacher yet, but you've, you've, if you ever wanted to become a teacher, online courses are for you. Um, and if you haven't really considered that before, but you're just kind of starting to consider it now and you're wanting to become a teacher right now for the first time, 
Online courses are for you. Again, no prior experience required, just a passion to teach someone and, and help them get a result. Um, so do you need to be certified to sell online courses? No, absolutely not. Uh, you just need to look at Tony Robbins to see that. You know, Tony Robbins is not certified uh, in anything. In fact, um, when he was first try attempting to get his certification, the rule was that you weren't allowed to teach anyone anything until you were fully certified. But after day one of the class, Tony went out to the bar and started, you know, using his um, self-improvement techniques on someone at the bar. And he came back the next day and reported um, what he had done to the class and told them the cool results he'd got with someone. And Tony actually got kicked out of that certification program because he broke the rule and he was teaching people before he was even certified. And he was so upset. He's like, why? But I'm helping get people get results before I'm certified. And you guys are getting angry at me with that. That's insane. Uh, but yeah, so you don't need to be, you don't need to be certified to get people results. You just need to be willing to help. Uh, the second thing is no prior experience is needed. So uh, the nice thing about getting started is that you, you, you're just getting started. And so you're you're at that place in your life where you're at square one and it's all it's all like it's so it's all just a learning experience starting from where you are now to where you want to be and um having prior experience oftentimes people with prior experience they think they know everything they think they know enough and so they're not open to learning more but if you have no prior experience it's actually a little bit better because um now you're going into this with no bad habits you can establish really good habits right off the bat um, do you need any fancy camera equipment or nice studio to record it? No, absolutely not. In fact, I'm recording this video from my couch and I just have a simple PowerPoint presentation. So you don't need any fancy camera equipment or nice studio to record it. Absolutely not. Uh, although you can, it's really nice to have, but definitely not necessary by any means. It would not let it slow you down. Uh, do you need to be good on camera already? No, definitely not. It's just like having prior experience. In fact, again, the, if you have no experience, there actually are some advantages to that. And I'll explain what those are in just a sec. In, in a few slides here, but um, it's okay to be camera shy. It's okay not to have any experience because you, you, if you learn the right way from the from day one, you're gonna have really good habits from day one. Um, do you need a huge social media following to sell to? No, definitely not. Um, you're, there's, there's ways of growing social media and it makes it easier to sell, yeah. But what's more important than having a social media following is actually having an email list following. And this is something most people don't pay any attention to. But once you start focusing on that and how, how to grow your Instagram following, uh, sorry, your email following, um, as well as your Instagram following, sure, um, you'll find it a hell of a lot easier to sell things and to just build relationships with future customers. Uh, do you need to be techie and love complicated softwares? No, definitely not. Uh, most of this stuff can be outsourced or most of this stuff can be handled by a freelancer or someone else to take care of the techie stuff for you. Uh, so um, again, all you really need is to be willing to reveal your deepest secrets, love your topic, be there for your students, and use the biggest success cheat code known to man, which again is asking for help. So let's get into the first real question here, how to find that perfect course idea. Well, the truth is you're not gonna have your perfect course idea on day one, and even if you do think you, you came up with it, you know what it is gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of refinement involved, a lot of refinement required. You're gonna have to keep going back to the drawing board and making it better and better and better, um, but, you don't think that if you don't have it on day one that you're a failure or you're a loser or you're just not cut out for this. It took me uh, a few months to nail the hit the nail on the hammer hit hit the nail hit the nail with the hammer, however you say it uh, with my great course idea. So it just keeps taking time and 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 a lot of attention and focus on on getting it right. But if you have a coach or someone to look over your shoulder and help you uh, point point you in the right direction, you can get this a lot quicker. Maybe on day two or three. I did it all on my own, which I would definitely regret. Um, and recently I started, I hired a coach and since I got the coach, everything's just been much more straightforward. So the truth is, yeah, you're not going to have your perfect course idea on day one. Um, and you also don't want to follow your passion necessarily. So if your passion is, um, let's say you're really passionate about creating music or you're really passionate about music in general, and you're kind of good at creating music, but not really, but you, you, you love it. It feels good, but you're not really good at it. Um, you're not going to create a course on creating music or music. Like as much as I'm passionate about rap music and like electronic dance music, as much as I love that music, I'm not going to create a course on it, even though I'm passionate about it. And so I, you need to ask yourself, like, what are you most equipped to help somebody get a result with rather than what are you most passionate about? Um, of course, you should love the topic that you're teaching for sure. But don't just let passion, you know, be, be, the, be your only guide. Uh, you want to focus on something that you're equipped to actually help somebody get a result with. And you want to have a passion for teaching in general, not necessarily just the passion for purely the topic. You're going to love the topic, but um, have a passion for teaching in general, helping people get results. So 
the way to find out what what your a great course idea for you would be would be like what can you talk about for five hours straight? If you can talk about something for five hours nonstop, then you probably know more about that topic than ninety nine percent of the population, and so you're gonna be able to provide a lot of value to people. Things that are really common sense to you are gonna be really like big aha moments and value bombs for other people. So again, what's something that you know more than ninety nine percent of the planet about? Uh, for me, when I first started getting selling with selling online courses. I knew more about raw foods than 99% of the planet. You know, you could ask me anything about the raw food diet and lifestyle and I'd be able to give you a really awesome answer. So you want to think back in your life right now, like what's something that if, if I could ask you any question about that you'd have a really awesome answer to. It's something that you've thought about a lot and spent a lot of time um, uh, perfecting in your own life. Um, the other question to ask yourself is like, what result are you confident you can help get for someone? And I, when I say result, I mean like specific, tangible, measurable result. Like, um, can you help somebody lose five pounds? Can you help somebody clear their skin from acne? Can you help uh, fix somebody's digestive issue? Can you help uh, somebody keep their entire house clean and tidy with organization skills? Can you help somebody create an amazing song? Can you help somebody land a date, right? Get, get a girlfriend, get a boyfriend. What result are you confident you can actually help someone get? Um, and what are you really good at? And just look back in your own life. Like, what are you really good at? It's, it, if you're really good at something, the chances are that um, you can help somebody else get really good at that as well. And people are happy to pay you for getting good at something. Um, and the other question to ask, a couple questions is, is like, is this something people actually want? And the way to find that out really quickly is to just ask yourself if it's something that you once wanted or it's something that you would want if you were just getting started as well. Because if you have something people really want and you're really good at teaching it, then and you know how to put together an online course, there's a really good chance you can make a lot of awesome cash with that, especially if you're able to um, sell it using social media and using an email list, using funnels, using webinars, just like how I teach. So um, make sure that it's something people actually want. It's a proven thing people want. People are actually actively saying that they want it. You can also do something called an ask campaign where you go on social media and you ask people in advance, you say something like, hey, if I was to put together a course teaching this, would you be interested, right? So. That's how you can find out if people are interested as well. And lastly, very importantly, can you objectively measure the end result? So I mentioned this earlier, but you want to make sure that the result that you want to help people get is actually something measurable. So instead of saying like, oh, I'm going to help people feel better. Well, how do you measure feeling better? Um, you might be better off saying like, and you might not be allowed to say this, but something like, I'm going to help you get you, get you off your depression medication. That's objective. It's measurable. And they're going to be feeling better, obviously. Or you might say something like, I'm going to help you um, fit into your wedding dress. Right? That's objective. You either fit into your wedding dress or you don't. Um, or I'm going to help you you know, with your basketball jump, help you jump two inches higher. Or as a runner, I'm going to help you run your five, a 5K two minutes faster. So it's objectively measurable rather than just saying, like, I'm going to help you, you know, feel better or look better or whatever. Or I'm going to help you perform better. It's too vague. You can't be vague or general at all. You need to be very, very specific and, and objective with, with your result. Um, now, how much time do you actually need to put into to thinking about this sort of stuff and creating your course to actually see results to actually start getting paid? Well, it depends on where you're starting from, right? If, if you already have 50,000 subscribers, like some of my students, or if you have five subscribers, or you have no subscribers, like some of my students, then the, the, the journey is going to be a bit different for you. You're not going to have to focus so much on, on incre increasing your following and increasing your audience size. Um, if you already have 50,000 subscribers, you can kind of just jump into creating the course um, and just purely focusing on that. But if you're just starting out, then of course, yeah, you want to focus on building your audience a bit using organic traffic, the organic methods. Um, I, while at the same time, you know, putting together some of the modules, some of the course outlines for your course. So it all depends on where you're starting from. As for how much time it takes, well, what you put in is what you get out. And But I, I like to binge create on things and get things done really quickly rather than just spreading them out over the course of a week or a month. I'd rather spend three hours one day filming a bunch of videos and then have those videos done for the entire week and not, not need to think about videos for the rest of the week or even the rest of the month. So binge creating is a very, very powerful tactic I like to use to get things done quickly and out of the way so I can focus on other things and keep moving forward. Uh, but once it's set up, honestly, the amount of um, maintenance required is minimal. Maybe an hour a day or less helping your students get results. Maybe doing some Q&A in the Facebook group or something. But once you're set up, once the course is selling itself, um, the amount of time investment is very minimal. But honestly, um, if you're looking for a way to like not spend much time on a business, 
online courses might not be the best for you because you should really love what you do so much that you want to invest like all your time into this and just do it full time. And I mean, if you're getting paid, you know, $10,000 plus dollars a month, then um, it's really easy to justify giving it your full focus because the pay can be really, really, really good. Um, but what, again, just a reminder, what you put in is what you're going to get out. So the more energy and passion you put into your, 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 into helping your students, the better results they're going to get. And then the better testimonials you're going to get and the better, easier it is for you to sell courses in the future. Um, and then here's the next question too: is what like, people ask, like, Ted, is it, is it too technical? I'm not very techy. I'm not tech savvy. I can't figure out the tech stuff. Well, the, the real thing is like, the honest truth is tech isn't the issue anymore. Tech is not the issue. The tech has been made to be super easy to use. The fact that you're watching this video right now is just proof of that. Uh, there's something else that's actually the issue that's standing in between you and selling an online course, and that is focus. The issue is focus. It's so easy to focus on the Kardashians. It's so easy to focus on the corona news virus outbreak. It's so easy to focus on what's trending on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. It's so easy to attend to our DMs and our messages and talk to our you know, parents and our friends about random stuff that has nothing to do with our business. But if you can focus on your business, if you can focus on creating valuable content for your students and helping them get results, you're going to be very successful. It just requires trimming all the distractions away, or at least most of the distractions away, so you can make some forward progress with your business. Um, as far as the tech goes, I mean, everything everything is figure outable with when you use these four methods right here, okay? So if you're concerned about tech being an issue, check it out. You've got customer support on every awesome um, software that I would recommend using, whether it's with your email um, client or whether it's with your funnel builder or what have you. There's awesome customer support embedded in those softwares, into those companies. They're here to help. They have phone support. They have email support. Um, they, they have walkthroughs on how to complete everything. Um, but you can also just hire one-on-one -on -one expert help. Um, so you can go on fiverr.com or upwork.com. I just got off a call this morning with someone who I hired on Fiverr and Upwork to do to help me out with tech stuff. Like you can just hire experts to do things for you or to show you how to do them. Like they can walk you through how to do something over Zoom. Um, and the softwares make it easy to use. Like softwares are designed to be super user friendly. So if you've never used a software before, uh, it's going to be kind of confusing maybe for the first 10 minutes. But then once you get the hang of it, you're going to know where to click and buttons don't move around a whole heck of a lot. There's the the file and the edit are always going to be top right. And all you're going to need to do is be able to copy, paste, click, and drag for the most part. Softwares are very, very easy to use um, once you learn how to use them, of course. And to learn how to use them, just hire the 101 expert help from Fiverr or Upwork.com. Um, and then there's tutorials as well. There's always tutorials on YouTube um, showing you how to do things. A lot of people have are making a full-time income just creating tutorials on how to use certain softwares. So there's definitely plenty of tutorials out there. They're always up to date. And um, yeah, again, if you need any help, though, there's always one-on-one -on -one expert help, which I would recommend doing because then someone can just do the thing for you or walk you through step-by-step -step how to do it yourself. So the, the, sec the, the uh, next question I want to address is, hey, what if I'm camera shy? What if I'm not good on camera? Well, being camera shy is actually an, an advantage initially because you come across as super innocent, honest, and trustworthy, very relatable. When people connect with you on, on, on this way, then they're going to be like, wow, this person, like, if they're on camera and they're teaching me how to do this thing and I can tell they're a bit shy on camera, like, they're coming across as very, very genuine. So people really actually appreciate you being on camera and um, being a little bit shy even. But the more you are on camera, the better you're going to get, um, especially if you're using the right habits from day one. Uh, some of the right habits include being succinct and to the point, not rambling on, using good lighting, um, not using a, a shaky hand or putting things on a tripod instead, right? There's just really good habits that you got to start developing from day one. And once you develop them from day one, you're not going to have bad habits that, that carry on and, and prevent your growth. Um, and people are going to be inspired seeing you on camera. They're going to be so inspired seeing you on camera that they're going to be inspired to sign up for your course. Uh, so the ne next thing I want to cover, one of the last things here is how to find your niche. Should you be in the vegan niche or the raw vegan niche or the mountain climbing niche or the uh, swimming niche, what, whatever, how do, you, how do you find that niche? Well, you just have to ask yourself, what kind of person are you? How would you label yourself? If you consider yourself vegan or vegetarian or paleo or keto or whatever, then that's your niche. If, if that's the kind of course you want to sell, like that's your niche is how would you label yourself and what are you trying to help people with? That's your niche. Um, so some example niches, right? we got vegan diet, raw food, handstands, Rubik's Cube, jump rope, calisthenics, programming, what I ate today niche, like the whole weight gain niche, weight loss niche, um, 
no fap supplement reviews, photography, meditation, cooking, interviews, clear skin, hormones, dog training, the list goes on. Um, I gave you these examples not to overwhelm you, but just to show you that the list is really infinite. This is just a quick list, some things I wrote up um, before making this, but the list really goes on and on and on. Um, but the point is in each of these niches, there is a community of people who are happy to buy an online course to get results a hell of a lot quicker, okay? So it doesn't matter what niche you're in, um, it matters that you pick a niche and that you really serve the people in that niche. Uh, so if you can answer this question, then that niche is really, really good fit for you. Do you know what your people struggle with? So for example, if we go back here, when it comes to um, cooking, the cooking niche, I don't know what people struggle with in cooking. Do they struggle with burning their hands on the stove? I don't know. I don't cook very much. Um, even yoga, I don't know what people struggle with in yoga. Do they, are they, like, what's their biggest struggle in yoga? Is it uh, pulling a hamstring or something? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm a complete idiot when it comes to yoga. But in terms of the raw food diet, oh, I know the inside and out. That's why I put together a course on that. When it comes to um, online marketing, I know that inside out. So I put together a course on that, how to sell online courses, right? So it's only certain things I know a whole heck of a lot about. Uh, maybe it's um, strength training as well. I know a lot about strength training. I could put together a strength training course as well. Um, minimalism, yeah, I'm really good at minimalism as well. I can put together a course on that. But anything other than those things, like I'm not really well equipped to be in that niche. So I know people struggle with in those niches, so I'm able to uh, go into one of those niches. As far as what would the best niche be to pick, you might have a few niches. Um, you can. You can be in multiple niches at the same time and then see which one, you know, you're just gravitating more towards, um, which one you find it's easier to attract customers, which one you find it's easier to talk about and help people get results with. So you're not locked into any niche, even if you pick one. Now, as for your RMS, you're going to want to create a refined marketing statement. Um, and the way to do that is, well, here's an example, first of all, right? Here's mine. I help vegans create profitable online coaching courses without needing any certifications or huge social media followings using automated webinars. So here's how you create your refined marketing statement. You fill in the blanks. I help niche. And again, this is maybe you help um, vegans, you help dog owners, you help moms, you help dads, you help parents, you help um, people immigrating to Canada. Like what is your niche? Who do you help? You help them get, and then what is their deepest desire? This needs to be a deep desire. This isn't something like, oh, I help them, um, I help them, you know, just be happier. That's so vague in general. It needs to be a deep, specific desire. Like, what can you help them get? And what do they really, really want? Right? And then make sure to mention that you can help them get it without a common roadblock. And this is something that they think they need in order to get that result, but really it's just a common roadblock. So what is that common roadblock and can you help them get it without it? If so, put it in there. And then buy new method. And so this new method needs to be something that maybe they've never heard of before, but it's something that you use to help them get that result. And if you use multiple methods, I totally understand, right? When I say automated, when I say I help vegans create profitable online courses using automated webinars, um, I also help them with funnels. I also help them with emails. I also help them with social media. Um, but the new method, everyone's already heard of those other things, but the new method is automated webinars. Maybe they haven't heard of automated webinars yet, so I put that in there. That's the new method. And that really is the central theme of my, my course is I help people in my coaching program. I help them create an awesome automated webinar that sells the course for them. So that's the new method. you got to put your new method in there. Um, now, if you're wondering why this video wasn't even more specific and why I'm cutting it so short right now is because uh, your business is, is unique. Okay, and so you're going to need a unique strategy. And so if we were to get on a call, it'd be really easy for me to look at your course idea and tell you exactly what you need to do right now or if your course idea is even you know, worthy of pursuing. I want to give you that stamp of approval and point you in the right direction. And so every time I see someone try to create an online course just with trial and error, they end up losing a crap ton of money and wasting a crap ton of time. So here's Armin, for example. I went on Facebook and I saw Armin made this post and I thought it would be valuable to share. He said, here's what his process looked like 12 months ago, starting 12 months ago when he decided to become a uh, successful coach and do um, online business and, and to create an online business, scaling his message around the world. So he said that, um, you know, he started off thinking that I could do this all on my own without buying any course or hiring any coaches, right? He's very excited, very um, pumped up to go and get ahead and do that. And then come May, July, you know, he starts funnel hacking, which is 
basically copying copying all the competitors. Um, he spends weeks of all these all-nighters creating all this stuff. He starts to experience procrastination, doubt, he gained weight, didn't have any social life. Um, and then he created an offer that he thought was like good at the start, but then he realized it was just confusing and unclear. And he just quickly threw together a course that he thought was good, but didn't know if it was for sure. And then in August, so a month later, he does his first webinar and makes a couple sales. A week later, makes a sale. And then the third week and fourth week, he's not making any sales. He's just like just spinning the wheels and nothing's actually happening. And so good on him for going for it. I, I really respect the fact that he went for it. It's awesome. But as he knows, he would have been a lot better off if he just got a course in the, or uh, signed up for a coaching in the first place. Because here's what he said in September, right? In September, he hit a huge roadblock and got completely discouraged. He ended up paying thousands of dollars to experts to help him out. And then he realized he did everything wrong. He had to start from scratch all over again, which was a super tough decision. Um, but it makes the most sense. It's super smart to do. And then come October and December, he was able to then build the audience online prop properly, um, create unbelievable value, value for his audience, got the attention of dream clients, and then focus on helping his new students get results. Right, His first four students were able to bring him in over $50,000, over $60,000. So good on, good on him for um, going for it. But again, he knew he probably would have been better off just getting coaching from the start. So here he even says, if I only knew how much time, energy, health, sanity, and effort I was going to waste by doing it on my own, I would have skipped straight to hiring the right experts to show me the path. I made more money and saved a lot of time once I spent it first on expert advice. So if someone else is higher up on the ladder than you, it makes sense just to learn from them. It just makes sense just to do what they're doing and, and do exactly as they say to do. And so if you'd like me to help you put everything you just learned here today into action, helping you create that RMS statement, helping you um, get crystal clear on your offer, helping you create your first funnel, create your first webinar. Um, I'd be happy to take a look uh, over your shoulder and see what you got going on right now and then point you in the right direction as far as what next steps to take. So if you're looking to create a profitable online course, uh, just like um, I've helped my students do here, then let's get on a call and potentially you can be one of these students in the future. Let's, we'll get on a call and uh, I'll be able to provide you with further clarity and give you additional resources to help you speed up the process to get you selling online courses. To book that call, you just head over to bingecreator.com and you can see uh, what times are available there. And if, you, um, if you'd if you like some more in-depth training before booking the call, then you can head over to tedcarclass.com and give that master class a watch if you haven't done so already. Uh, but once you watch that class, you do want some help creating an online course, head over to bingecreator.com and book that call with me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to speaking with you on the phone and seeing what sort of results we can get for you and, and checking out your course idea and seeing if it's a good fit. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for, uh, for checking out this Q&A. I hope you got a lot out of it. And I look forward to speaking with you on the phone. See ya. Bye-bye.